everyone, and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Monday, May 1st, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm incredibly tired. What? Well, hello, incredibly tired. How are you today? Incredibly tired. Oh, why are you incredibly tired? Fuck if I know. Did you sleep? Yeah. How much? Uh, see, you dropped me off at 11.40. <clears throat> I went to sleep at 12. Woke up at what? What time do you have to wake up? Six, six thirty. Six, yeah. So that's more than you normally get. An hour. Maybe it's because uh, you got more than you normally get, but less than you actually need. So your body's just tired. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Some people. Some people can, you know, like survive on on four hours of sleep. Surviving in what your body actually needs are very different things. My body doesn't need anything really. No, just death. Yeah, sweet, sweet release. You actually sound like you're getting sick. You sound like you're like like a, like a cold's building up on you. Don't tell me that. No, it's true. It's what you sound like. I'll kill you. You're you're too sick and tired. Knock on wood. You're too tired to uh to kill me. Oh, I'm sick of your shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Good. I'm glad. How was your weekend though? Uh, it wasn't bad. Played a bunch of D&D. &D. It's like a normal weekend, really. I did a little bit of cleaning and cleaned under my, my couch and everything. It was good. Kendall in the chat room says, surviving does not equal thriving. That's fine. I don't need to thrive. I'll just, just die out. Yeah, the last of your kind. And be extinct. Are you grossly endangered? I mean... I don't think so. I mean, there's only one of me, really, though, so kind of. Well, I mean... But I can't mate with myself... Well, okay, I mate with myself a lot, but I can't, like, produce. Well, you're producing something. Well, you can't spawn. You can't reproduce. Yeah. That would. Stop oh. yawning. You'll make me yawn. I haven't gotten enough sleep either. Ha, ah, suck it, loser. Yeah, it's all your fault. It's not. I had to take you home. Well, you could have done that earlier. No, couldn't have. No. Ten. Judge to Exxon paid twenty million dollars for violating Clean Air Act more than sixteen thousand times. Oh fuck! This was submitted to Maxwell Hill to our politics. So this isn't doesn't have to do with what Exxon is currently under investigation for. This was uh, uh, This was a. Uh, lawsuit that it was initiated back in 2010 in the state of texas um that was oh, not the the one up here that has 135 volumes no 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 that, that that's bp no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry what the exxon case has 300 and something volumes there you go anyway so but this is from a case from 2010 that is finally now being somewhat resolved um and that the, until it gets appealed well, and yeah, Exxon's already come out and said that they intend to appeal the decision, but uh, otherwise, though, basically, they've cranked over 10 million pounds of pollutants into the air between 2005 to 2013, um, and now the judge was like, yeah, you broke a whole bunch of laws, now you get to pay for it. In the well, amount, I mean, they should. In the amount of $20 million. That's... I mean, for Exxon, that's just like, well, we're just going to jizz that money away anyways. Well, I mean, they still don't want to have to pay $20 million. Right. That doesn't mean that they can't. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they could. It's not going to hurt them. Uh, the judge also is imposing upon them all of the environmental group's legal and expert fees. Oh, so that might be a little more expensive. Maybe like another five hundred grand, depending on just how much... I don't know if it's against Exxon. They might they might be a, like a mill or two. Yep, we'll see what happens though. I mean, Exxon enjoyed about 14.2 million dollars in economic benefits by delaying the installation of the things that would have prevented this from happening. So, I'm not sure if that was worth it or not since right now they're being charged 20 million. Oh, I, I mean like Kendall said clean air is only worth 20 million. Well, see, here's the thing is that when it comes to the law is that based on what laws are broken, there is a certain amount of penalty that can be levied against that. And just because a judge is like, well, you're ExxonMobil, you guys can pay lots of money, you, you need to pay the state of Texas, you know, a billion dollars for the damage you've done. 
unfortunately, that's not how the law works, even if he wants to. Right. Because what is 20 million divided by 16,000? Roughly, it's roughly $1,250. So there is, it, it's probably something along the lines of like 1250 per penalty. Mm. And there's over, and there's 16,000 plus penalties. So. I see. It's still a lot of money, but at the same time, like, I feel like it's chump change for him. Uh, it is. <laughs> Kendall, smash the laws, hashtag anarchy. Oh, God. <laughs> and, I remember my giant anarchistic phase. What is, what is ExxonMobil's market cap right now? Got in trouble. Real big trouble for being an anarchist. Uh, ExxonMobil is currently worth $349.58 billion. Oh. That is not how much money they have. That is how much they are worth. Wait, so they could have more? No, 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 no. All of their assets and everything combined. That well, not no, so not the assets. Their market. So like to buy a share of Exxon Mobil is eighty two dollars and six cents right now. All of their shares combined equals a market cap of three hundred fifty billion dollars. If you wanted to buy every single share of Exxon Mobil to have a hundred percent control, if that's possible at least, um, it would cost you three hundred fifty billion, and then you would own all of Exxon Mobil. Three hundred fifty billion, you say. Now, I'm not sure how these no I mean, don't don't ask me to explain the stock market because I don't fucking understand it well enough to try to do that. Hey, Michael, explain the stock market to me. Son of a bitch. So, but with that, I mean, there is the question to present of does money in the bank actually equate to your market share? And we'll be talking a little bit more about that later. But no, money in the bank equates to a title shot when you cash it in. What? That's a wrestling thing. Money in the bank is a briefcase that you walk around with that you have to get by climbing up a ladder and knocking another guy off a ladder until you can get it, right? Okay. And it gives you a title shot whenever you cash it in. So whenever anybody cashes it in, it's always after a championship match. So when the dude's already tired? Oh, exactly. Yeah, oh, okay. That's the, the impressive ones are when they cash it or they they fight their title shot, they win their title. Then somebody cashes it in, and they fight them, and then they still win. That's some impressive shit. In a scripted event. Right. It doesn't matter, though, because it's still like you're sitting there and actually doing physical things for a lot, a long time. Oh, sure. The, the physical ability of it, very impressive. Mm -hmm. Nine. Japan issues first order to protect United States ships amid North Korean tension. This is submitted by Ready373 to Our World News. So here's the interesting about thing about this. Is this the they just recently changed their laws in order to allow – just last year, they enacted different legislation to allow them to be able to do this. Because ever since World War II, for you know the last – what is it? Like 70 years at this point-ish? Roughly. Japan has – their military has been under a very specific rule that they're not their military isn't allowed to get too large they're not allowed to get involved with conflicts and their weapons can only be used if it is purely in self defense right their legislation now they have they have changed it to where it can be in the self defense of a friend of an ally right and so they have dispatched aircrafts to go defend our our ships that are keeping watch over north korea mm. This is this has been a bit of a controversial thing for Japan because Japan was enjoying its like somewhat neutral stance that it had been taking. It's like, yeah, we're friends with these guys, but because of what we did 70 years ago, we're not going to get involved with anything. And with that change of legislation last year, they that now I mean already almost immediately in in terms of the grand scale of the world, a year is not that long. They're already somewhat involved with a possible conflict. Right. And a close this is, one. This this should show you that like things are getting that bad. Like even Japan is stepping in. Well, and Japan's aircraft are specifically going to be defending our supply vessels because we have a full armada or whatever the hell it's called sitting at North Korea's door. But those vessels need fuel and food and stuff like that. So there are other vessels that are continuously going back and forth to bring them fuel and food and whatever else they need. 
shipments of stuff. Yep. And so Japan's aircraft are going to be defending those supply shipments. It's understandable. Makes me think of like old RTS games where they tell you like to defend the convoy. Oh god. I always hated defense missions like that because the convoy or the merchant, whoever you're fucking traveling with, is always the slowest piece of goddamn trash in the fucking game. And just moves randomly. Right, so like there are long segments, there are like five minute segments where you're walking along the path and there's no enemy spawning, so you're like running laps around them. You're just like, well, if I get too far ahead, they stop and yell at you to come back, so you just keep running laps around them. Or in RTS, you're like, I'll have my guys awkwardly walk alongside you. Yeah. So we'll see what's going on. I mean, these these aircraft have been stationed there as a deterrent to encourage North Korea to no longer test ballistic missiles. They've been testing them on and off against uh, UN sanctions. All of these tests so far have failed. And this is just a, a little reminder of like, hey, quit it. I mean, if Japan is getting... It's like it's like going to war against Australia. It's fucking crazy. Who does that? Remember, it was like Israel did it because they didn't vote with them. Oh, right. Ugh. <laughs> That's like... It's like all the memes that came out, like, what was it, like four months ago when Canada was bombing ISIS. And it's like, damn, if Canada's bombing you, you know you've done something wrong. Right, you have to be careful of the Japanese fleet. They they have kaiju following them everywhere. And someone was like picking a fight with New Zealand. It's like really New Zealand, really, real. That's who. Okay. You just got to be careful, man. One day you're gonna get in a war against Japan, and all all Japan's got to do is get Shinji in that damn fucking mech. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they 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 they've already got the 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 prototypes of the first Gundam that'll exist. Dude. I'm still excited for the fucking goddamn Megabots fight that never fucking happened this summer that was supposed to. I thought it, last summer. I thought it. I thought it's happening this summer. Yeah, it was supposed to happen last summer. Right, but couldn't they like they couldn't get approval for it to be held anywhere because of the damage that's most likely going to be caused? Something like that, and it upsets me. Also, the two robots. I feel like it's either good. I feel like that fight's gonna not be very long whenever it does happen. Well, no fucking shit. Well, because one has like mini, like ours has uh, the the United States one has like mini guns that shoot twenty okay. twos. So they're not supposed to be using those. It's supposed to be a hand on hand combat fight. Well, and Japan's got fucking sh like massive chainsaws on it, and I'm like, one of these things seems well, better than the other. We're supposed to have chainsaws on ours too. Have you seen those sketches with the fucking eagles where the aviators and the chain guns coming out of their mouths? So hang on, so. Is somebody in this thing? Yeah, no, okay, so in the Japanese one, it is piloted by one guy. In the American one, it is piloted by two. One guy to control the mech, and the other guy to control the guns and everything. Okay, so here's the problem I see. Much like actual Gundam, someone's gonna fucking die. <laughs> I'm fine with this. I will <laughs> gladly put my life on the line to be a fucking mech pilot. Specifically so I can got die in the heat of combat. Yeah, is that what you want? Oh, God, in a mech, though. You okay? Oh, it's, I've been so excited with mechs ever since reading Starship Troopers as a kid. Eight. Hong Kong gets a major ruling on rights for same-sex spouses. This is submitted by Laura Midsom Chicksum to our uplifting news. So, um, in a very surprising twist change, whatever you want to call it, it is you, if you are in because gay marriage has been legal in Hong Kong for quite some time, but it didn't change anything. Like you weren't like you didn't receive any benefits from your spouse. Um, you couldn't do anything with taxes or anything like that. And a recent ruling made it where that your same sex partner is entitled to all the same benefits available to spouses of heterosexual couples. So like so like if you you know work for X corporation and that corporation you know provides insurance to you and your family and that includes your spouse before this ruling that wouldn't cover your spouse if you had a same sex partner it does now I want to I want to really like enforce same sex marriage cuz like they 
we they've been bashed so so long for for wanting to get married. Just let them do it, right? At the same time, I also want to push like heterosexual domestic partnerships. Like I feel like that should also be a thing. Say people don't want to get married. It's not in their, you know, in their interests, but they still want benefits and everything. Why can't they be domestic partners? Um, I mean, they're they're depending on the state. Right. I mean, like in England, you you could be in some parts of England, you can be a domestic partner heterosexually, but it's not recognized in other parts of England. And I feel like that's stupid. I feel like it should just be all over everywhere. You should be allowed to just pick somebody and go, hey. Me and them, we're going to be the best because I absolutely love them and they get all my benefits and they get my benefits. Kendall in the chat room says, smash marriage, hashtag feminist. <laughs> so, sure if you want. so here's the thing is like, there has to be some sort of, because you don't want people just like every week changing who gets their benefits. Well, of course not. You, you have like a ceremony, or not a ceremony, you have to have paperwork filed and everything. Technically, I can get married now go through a divorce or a disillusion if we both agree upon it and then get married next week. Yeah. I mean it's not stopping anyone from doing that anyways. So then why 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 what's the difference then between doing that and doing a, the other thing you were talking about? A domestic partnership? Yeah. Because domestic partnerships are generally a homosexual thing and you can't in a lot of places a heterosexual couple cannot get a domestic partnership. Okay. They instead have to be married. And some people don't want to be married because of the religious bits of it. And on top of that, they, they have different rulings for... Like, a domestic partnership is, is different than a marriage when it comes to jurisdictions on some things. This sounds like a lot of annoying semantics. It is. But I feel like it should be open for everyone. For both of those things. Well, unfortunately, government moves extremely slow. And that would probably require a lot of legal changes, which is a pain in the ass. I don't. I don't think it'd be that. You you would have to rewrite some laws, and that is a very slow, painful process. You Seven. would just have to rewrite them to allow the other people to do it. I know. Like Re we have all the forms and paperwork already there. Oh no, I understand. Rewriting laws at all is a long, arduous process. Which is stupid because it's easy. You just go. Everyone can do this. Well, it has Fucking to it, but, cross that bit out, put this bit in, done. But yeah, but at while it is that simple to say, the actual legal process of going about that takes a year minimum, and that's if everything goes quickly. That's fine. Like a year, two years, ten years, that's no problem, right? Okay. I don't have a problem with that. The problem is people are, aren't actually starting to do it. Just be patient. We'll get there. I can be patient when it's already going through. It might be in some places, and you just don't know it. Did you look it up? Yes. Are you lying to me? No. Are, is that a lie? No. <laughs> you liar. Hey, how dare you? <laughs> you just assume shit like that? Yep. Seven. Officer fatally shoots 15-year-old in Balt Springs. This was submitted by Nux Rule All to our news. Bulk? Sure. Bulk Springs? Bulk Springs? Bulch Springs? I think it's Bulk. Bulk Springs? Yeah. In in Texas? I don't know. It could be Bulch. They, they, they sound like people that would probably say some shit like that. Rude. Anyway, so there, there's there's not a whole lot to this in that the officers were responding to a, a party that had gotten pretty rowdy and someone had reported that they had heard gunshots. Officers arrived. Um, it was a party full of young people. The young people split like none other because that's what young idiots do. Um, one of the cops pulled out his rifle and started shooting at one of the vehicles that was driving away and caught a 15-year-old in the head, and he died. Damn. Uh, is this the same one about with the guy sitting on the the chair and firing at people at the pool party? There was nothing in this article about that. So okay, because I, I don't that, think so. That happened. That happened this weekend. There was a pool party, and this forty nine year old dude who just got like uh, dumped 
freaking out, and uh, he went down to the pool party, and someone was like, hey, come on in, it's fun, we should go hang out and everything. Immediately pulls his gun out and shoots that person, that person falls to the ground. And then he proceeds to start shooting people as he's drinking a beer, and they all start running away. He then sits on, on this lawn chair, screaming at people to leave, the police come, they start yelling at him, he starts yelling at them, he raises their gun at them, and four of them shoot him. Interesting. Well, the the Kendall in the chat room asked, "Why would you shoot someone who is driving away? They are no threat to you." The the, the policeman's original claim was that the car was backing up towards their uh, towards the police cruiser. The policemen were wearing body cams. The vehicle was definitely one hundred percent driving away. Um, the police officer that fired the shots has been placed on administrative leave, and the entire case is being investigated by the Dallas Police Department. They did that. That's as far as it's gotten right now. Yeah, uh, Kendall, he was on the phone with his ex-girlfriend. Or he tried to get onto the phone with his ex-girlfriend, but his, there was no answer. So, right, From what I read. Right now, we don't know much past that besides they responded to a call. Something was going on, a bunch of people split, and there, there's not been any official statement from the officer. We don't have the officer's name, we don't know who he is, we don't know what's going on with that right now, and they're intentionally keeping that under wraps so that people don't raise pitchforks to the cop. Mm -hmm. So, but we, that that's as far as it goes right now. Real unfortunate. It is. Um, apparently, the young man's name, who is Jordan Edwards, he was a 15-year-old male that went to Mesquite High School... He was a, apparently a real good kid, uh, he, and is no more. There's a lot of crappy shit happening to good kids. Like, there's that kid who was raped by the janitor recently. Yes, Kendall, this is why body cams are a good thing, because they can validate truth. Yeah. I don't understand why all cops don't have body cams. I mean, here's the thing. I feel like they should have body cams, I understand, but I don't feel like that footage should be openly available all the time. Like, sure. it, it, it should be confidential footage that is reviewed See, when it's needed. Their, their whole thing is like, oh, we talk about really personal shit while we're in the car, and so we wouldn't want that shit Nobody know, gives to be a shit. recorded. It's like, yeah, I do that anyways in a courthouse where there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing is like, yeah, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, just slap a camera on yourself. It's nothing, it's not, it's not any different than a camera being pointed at you from up top. No, it's not. Well, I mean, the body cams can hear things too, which is another part of it. It's fair. But. But, I, I mean, here's the thing. You're a fucking cop. Like, you need to have some sort of uh, accountability. Especially since you're you're one of the the only people who can who are legally allowed to stop somebody with deadly force with a gun almost at all times. Mm hmm. Especially in America, because well, America. Mm hmm. So, we'll see if we find out more on that, but I, I imagine after putting him on administrative leave and launching the investigation, we probably won't hear much more about it from the police department. especially Not for another month or two. Well, also because the, the unfortunate things is, like, as unfortunate as this is, this did actually get some attention, but there's going to be something else that happens next week, and while there will be a very small group of people that are still following this and trying to either get... I don't know, man. I still get Harambe memes all the fucking time. That is completely different. I don't know. It is completely different because that's something that the internet took hold of and turned into a, a eternal meme. You'll wait. This kid, this kid who was, who was killed, he'll, the internet will take hold of him. Maybe not into an eternal meme, but they'll find them. That's the only reason Harambe lives on. How dare you? Harambe lives on in our hearts, not just because Although, of the meme. I really love, you know, there's digs out for Harambe and balls out for Bantu, and mm -hmm. now there's a goddamn magic card that is a god whose name is Bantu. <laughs> whose name is Bantu. And I'm like, fuck, he'll never be able to read that damn magic card. It's unfortunate card. that he's not an ape and he's like a giant crocodile. He's like Sebek. Who cares? Balls out for Bantu. Yeah. That, I mean, that needs to be a deck name. Apple is about to report $250 billion in the bank and is keeping 93% of it offshore. This is submitted by Specs to our technology. So this is that this is literally cash that they have on hand. 
sitting available to use is two hundred and fifty million dollars. Billion. Billion dollars. Sorry. Now a little bit of that is accounted for because Apple has about eighty-eight billion dollars in debt to pay to fund shareholder payouts because you get dividends for owning shares, right? Mm -hmm. um, based on profit. So, I mean, that said, that two hundred fifty billion will go down to what uh, one hundred and twenty-two. No, nope, one. That's not right. Math. One hundred and sixty-two. One hundred and sixty-two billion. Now let's uh, let's talk about some of the things you can purchase with uh, with that much money. Go on. Uh, would you like to buy Netflix, Nathan? Sure. Do you know what the market cap is for Netflix? If you wanted to buy every single share of Netflix, no. Sixty-five billion dollars. Oh, they could do that. Oh yeah, they could totally do that. Do you want to buy Tesla? Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, that'll be fifty-one billion dollars. They could with with the money they have in the bank, they could buy Tesla and Netflix. They could buy me dinner. You want to know what else they could buy? What? Tr give me a guess of something massive and amazing that is a market cap of $180 billion. Uh, Disney. Yes. Good fucking guess. I'm impressed. Nice Damn work. Damn right. Yeah. Yep. They could buy Disney for $180 billion if they wanted to. Really scary. Yep. Do you know Apple what? is Apple's worth more than a lot of nations combined. Apple right now is is the most valuable company in the world and is has a market cap of seven hundred and sixty eight billion dollars. Jesus Christ! I can't. I can only dream of being able to swim like Scrooge McDuck through money like that. Bef and even then, in my dreams, it's probably not equaled out to, to that much because, fuck, I can only swim through so much money. Before the end of the decade, it is projected that they will be the first company in the entire world to reach a value of a trillion dollars. So they're, so they're past Google? Yeah. They're past Alphabet? They, they, those two kind of sit pretty close to one another. All right. Uh, let me look at what Alphabet's market sh uh, market cap is right now. Could they purchase Alphabet? Alphabet, no. Well, not not with the money they have in the bank. Alphabet's market cap is currently sitting at six hundred and sixty-two billion. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. I mean, it's a hundred billion less than Apple. That's fucking insane. Yep. And if I could get a fraction of that, I could live like a king for the rest of my life. Yep. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. You know that question that we ask sometime of where is all the goddamn money that everyone owes everybody? It's motherfucking an Apple. Found some of it. <laughs> Apple and Google, guys. We found it, boys. That said, we are trillions of dollars in debt. So, I mean... That's a good chunk of it. That, sure, that we owe to Apple, even though Apple technically owes us money. Exactly. Cause, we just gotta extort them. Because here's the thing, is that uh, the, the second richest tech company is Microsoft, which is... Which, which they they have 126 billion dollars in their pocket reportedly. Now none of these none of these numbers are exact because they're not exactly being like, oh yeah, look at these fucking as they hold up their fucking phone and be like, look at this fucking bank cash. Oh yeah. Uh, if you're curious, Microsoft is currently worth 537 billion dollars. Okay, so how much is that in peso? A lot. How much is that in yen? A lot. How much is that in rubles? A lot. What about? Bitcoin, uh, less like three, like three <laughs> Bitcoin. Yeah, it has to be like I don't know, maybe like a million Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is like, what is the value of Bitcoin right now? Like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, something like that. USD to Bitcoin. What is the value uh, a Bitcoin? Oh, can I? Can we do that the other way around? Bitcoin to US dollars. Yeah, uh, one thousand four hundred and sixty-five dollars and eighty-eight cents. Jesus. Anyway, so the thing is also to note here, though, is that of all of the cash and the other liquid ha uh, liquid assets they have, the majority of them are being held in offshore accounts because if that money is brought into the United States, it is then taxed 
pretty heavily. And of that course, is, they don't want to pay taxes. Right. And, like, here's the thing. Like, it's really easy when you're the broke guy like you and me to criticize them for not giving the country money. But if you make money, like, if you get any money, you don't want to hand it to someone else. Like, I pay my taxes, one, because I have to, and two. I, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I mean, like, I don't want to give it to somebody else. Do you want to give it? I mean, if, if, if I had enough to live comfortably, I would definitely give the rest of the shit to somebody else because I don't need it. Right. But would that be the government? Would that be your first choice? Um, Actually, with how much, you know, like, we we are in debt. Just going to fund Alaska? I honestly wouldn't mind funneling it back into the government as long as they can use it properly. It's funny is that this money could fund Alaska for like 50 years. Right. I mean, if, if, if I can sit there and pay for, for everyone's fucking, um, education, I would totally do it. If I could sit there and pay for everyone's fucking, um, medical bills, I'd totally do it. Sure. That being said, I mean, I feel like I'm more altruistic than a lot of people, but that's fair. Cause I've, I've had nothing. Yeah. Having nothing sucks. I know what it's like to have nothing. Mm hmm. But there's a lot of people that don't feel that way and wouldn't want to let go of the money that they've gotten. And that's where Apple's sitting right now. Now, they are looking... Here, Here's the funny thing, is that... Um, I, I am a terrible capitalist. I'd much rather be a socialist. He, he, he just is a socialist. Um, Apple CEO Tim Cook has said he is interested... <laughs> right. is, he is interested in moving the company's cash stateside if he can get the right tax conditions. Oh, and you bet your sweet ass fucking Trump is going to be like, yeah, let's take your taxes. That's, you know, like 35%. We're going to drop all the way to like, you know, 10. Well, I mean, if uh, Tom Cook wants to try and move that cash into the United States, now's a good time to try to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's kind of unfortunate because, you know, they're moving their money back into the United States. But at the same time, it's it's much, much less than they should have been. Well, whatever. The, the question now is, what do they do with it? Oh, fuck. They're, they're rich. They don't care what they do with it. They could buy a bunch of homeless people and, and recreate, like, Death Race, and they'd be happy. That would be epic in a horrible in a horrible way. It's a very horrible way, but yeah. Five. Speaking of horrible. Trump, why was there a civil war? Ugh. Ugh. Oh. <sighs> oh, God. Submitted by Paranoid Android to our politics. So, I'm... I'm, I'm oh, God. I'm going to, uh... I'm going to read read these these three, three paragraphs here. It's like four lines. In a quote... In a quote. I mean, had Andrew Jackson been a little bit later, you wouldn't have had the Civil War. He was a very tough person and he had a big heart. He was really angry that he saw what was happening with regard to the Civil War. He said there was no reason for this. Wasn't Andrew Jackson like... Andrew Jackson was the seventh president of the United States and he died... He was like 20 years before the fucking Civil War. He died in 1845. The Civil War began in 1861. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> God damn it, Kendall. I want to repeat that, but I can't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't repeat that on air either. Uh, all right, so I know Kendall's being sarcastic, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to do the, um, <clears throat> the accent. Well, if black people wouldn't have been so dang selfish, white people wouldn't have had to die. Yeah, that's about right. And so he, the president of the United States is now questioning why the Civil War occurred. Literally. And he said, nobody asked that question. Why did the Civil War happen? Here's the funniest thing. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody asked that question? Uh-huh. Nobody. You want to know what's even... Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure I asked that question in, like, fifth grade, and I got an answer. Do you want to know what's even better? What? It is literally... A question on the test to become an American citizen. Oh my god. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. It, ah! I, I'm also pretty sure that United States history um, kind of 
kind of, you know, talks about that a lot. Oh, God. What world do I live in? I'm going to have an aneurysm. So Twitter is uh, went, went to town on this. There is. A- oh, God. I bet everyone who saw this, like everyone who's memeing about it, just their face lit up like a goddamn child on Christmas coming down the stairs and seeing a giraffe under the tree. If you want to see the delightful things that people have said, just go to Twitter and type in hashtag Trump teaches history. Oh, God. Oh, it's worse than Nancy DeVoe. Pilgrims. Love those guys. Tremendous work ethic. Invented oatmeal. Landed at Fraggle Rock. Bigly winners. Uh, Andrew Jackson owned slaves. (laughs) Oh, God. This is going to agitate my kidney stone. So, um, in, in the continued light of being an absolute embarrassment, oh god, I everybody, I present to you, and and I understand what he was trying to say. He was trying to be like, you know, why did it have to lead to Americans killing Americans? Why couldn't they, you know, take it in a more civil route? That's not how Americans are. Oh, <laughs> but that's not how Americans are. When have we ever been civil? Never. We suck at being civil. We were pissed off at people, so we threw a bunch of tea in the water. Yep. Like giant babies having a fit. Yeah, that's what we are all the time, but we're babies with money and guns. Oh, God. Um, And so, like, I think what he was saying, you know, why couldn't they come to a a peaceful agreement? Is And I hope that's what he was trying to get at. But at the same time, holy shit, dude, think before you speak. Like, he does, like, it, it, I, I, I so often can tell what he is wanting to say, but he never had to worry about how to say those things before. He just starts a sentence and hopes it ends well. It, it, but it does it most of the time. I know. Oh, God. You know what I need? Ah, oh, damn it! Wait, I need to. I need to make a note of this somewhere. Um, shit. Uh, you there? I'll, I'll just type it in here. You make me sad. There we go. Uh, I I need the the we need the sound bo- bloop. Uh, fuck. <laughs> we need a sound bite from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, when the the guy says, "You make me sad." Yeah, okay. we, we need to get that one. I just sure. needed to type it somewhere in hopes that I might notice. Uh, I don't know about that, but okay. Well, I mean, there's the hope, right? All right, here's hoping. Here's here's hoping. Four. All right, Pandora. Amazon woman. <laughs> and, whoa, hold up. Rewind. <laughs> Wait, no, you can't click it yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> should we try this again? Are you, are you ready? Sure. No. All right. <clears throat> uh, what is this bugger all? Uh, number number four. Take two. <laughs> Production. Arizona woman finds note from Chinese prisoner in Walmart purse. Note is a plea for help. This was submitted by the Royal Ham to our World News. So. Woman went to Walmart. Not Wal- Amazonian. Not Amazonian. <laughs> Woman went to Walmart, bought a purse, uh, later found in one of the zipper pockets a note. Um, the note translates into, and she's had this checked by three different translators for Chinese. Um, and it, it translates into inmates at the Yingshan prison in Gong. Guangxi, China, are working 14 hours daily with no break and rest at noon. Continue working overtime until 12 midnight, and whoever doesn't finish his work will be beaten. The meals are without oil and salt. Every month, the boss pays the inmate 2,000 won. Any additional dishes will be finished by the police. If the inmates are sick and need medicine, the cost will be deducted from the salary. Prison in China is unlike prison in America. Horse, cow, goat, pig, dog, which literally translates into means inhuman treatment. Um, there's, there was no signature or anything like that. There's no way to know who wrote the note, just that someone in one of those factories over in China wrote the note and snuck it into one of the purses that was then purchased and then discovered. 
Mm. This has been presented to Walmart. Walmart has responded with that they cannot specifically comment on the note. They have no way to verify the origin of the letter, but one of their requirements for all of their product suppliers um, that make that sell products through Walmart um, that they are that they should be voluntary as indicated by their quote standards for suppliers. That's that's just a spooky thing to find in your purse anyways. Well, and here's the thing is that like how how do I phrase this? Okay. Things in America are a lot better than they are in a lot of other places. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to go, things in America for 300 No, no, no. Things in America are a lot better than things in a lot of other places. And Oh, you don't say. Well, it's important to say because a lot of Americans think they have it so fucking bad and we don't. Like, we are so goddamn privileged that we forsake our own privilege and take it for granted. In some ways, yes, we're we're really privileged. Now, this some places in the United States are really privileged for sure. Oh yeah, but the thing is, is that now all the conditions that the person who wrote this note, because Walmart says you know that they have the standards for suppliers, and those standards are probably based on the location where the suppliers have their factories so the factory has its its standards that are set by the laws in china and the laws in china this might be legal the condition that this particular worker is under now in america it would never be legal at all and the company would be you know flogged but in china it might be okay right but does that uh, like w what about united nations laws like is, is is that against anything for that i don't believe china's part of the united nations are they I don't know. I just figured the United Nations is everyone. No, 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 no. Uh, let's see. M members of the United Nations. Because I don't, I don't think China is a part of it. Um, member, member states of the United Nations. Oh, wait. Hang on. Um, no, maybe you are right. Yeah, it's like the the People's Republic of China or something. Current members. Member state. I'm looking for for China in Democratic here. Democratic Republic. I don't remember. Uh, nope. China. China. Uh. Uh. No. They are a former member. Wait. No. Oh. As as of when? No. Hang on. Date of admission. Um. I I don't know. This is this Wikipedia is not very clear. What do the highlighted blue things mean? It means that... Oh, original members are listed with a blue background. So, yeah, China is a member of the United Nations. But at the same time, I don't understand everything that the United Nations involves. Mm. I figure it's just a bunch of nations getting together and going, Hey, you there. You're being a dick to your people. Knock it off. Well, here's the or thing, though, is that you. it might not even necessarily be China that is the one that's being a dick to their people. Because, I mean, we have... Like, if, if this, this person that made this purse that wrote this note might be in prison. And part of their prison is that they need to make these purses. And we we do that, too, here in America. I mean, the, the real cliche one is that, you know, the prisoners make license plates, but they're making other things now, too. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and yes, they're, they are getting less than people who would be working out in regular public, but that doesn't make it any more humane. Oh, I understand. But maybe laws for prisoners is different. I think it's stupid because prisoners are still people, even if they are less humane than some people. Sure. It also depends on what you did on if I think you should even be in prison at all. Right. Unfortunately, though, as terrible as this is, I doubt anything comes from it whatsoever in any way. Yeah, like Kendall said, it's just slavery with extra steps. That's one way to look at it. Uh, I need to hit this button. Three. Jaw Rule and Fire Festival slapped with $100 million lawsuit for multiple counts of fraud. Whoa, this is submitted by Rap Autiste to our music. Yeah, so it, it, they, 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 there's the Fire Festival that happened recently that was, it, it was basically supposed to be like a second Coachella. If you don't know what Coachella is, it's a music festival. It's okay, fucking wait, lit. Wait, it's not, it's not a music festival. Is. It is an art festival because. It's motherfucking it, lit. 
It, and it's basically a place for a whole bunch of performers and artists, and I don't just mean music artists, there's also a lot of physical art there as well, um, that they all get together and they just present a whole bunch of awesome art. Now, Coachella is a pretty high profile event. You pretty much, like, Coachella tickets are stupid expensive. You don't go unless you are either performing there or you're, it, it's, a, it's a fucking celebrity party. And and if you're performing there, then holy shit, you're motherfucking huge. Yeah, yeah. Fire Festival was supposed to be something similar to that in that they were going to have this big massive festival that Ja Rule was hosting. Um, it was going to be on an island. It was supposed to be this beautiful Was it Ibiza? Ibiza? I B I Z A. I don't I don't know. Uh. What 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 is I B I Z A? Uh it's it's in a lot of songs recently. Okay. I don't know what that is. Though. I took a pill in Ibiza. It's supposed to be like a, a party haven. Oh okay, I don't I don't believe so. Okay. I mean it was it, it's in the Bahamas. Is a is Ibiza in the Bahamas? I think so actually. So anyway, the the tickets were expensive as hell. The only way to get there was you had to buy plane tickets to get out there and it was a complete wreck. Like they were supposed to be providing shelter and food for everyone and Never they... mind. Ibiza's in the, off the coast of Spain. Okay. Um <laughs> and like they didn't have enough power there like like they didn't get enough power provided to the island to support all of the electronics that were there the catered meals was literally like a bat like a an open bag of caesar salad from costco and literally two pieces of white bread with two pieces of craft american cheese in between damn Ch hit me right in my fucking childhood. Yeah, some of the tents caught fire. There was there was there was a huge problem with theft, um, and like the, like people were like raiding things at the festival, and people spent a lot of money to go here, and. Mm. There was constantly being touted as, you know, this this beautiful luxury villa. It's going to be this wonderful party, and it it was a shit show. It was awful. At absolute garbage it, it was not lit it was fucking smoldering yeah and so people and and here's the thing is that they were like hey did you know that you were gonna have all these problems and they basically said uh yeah yeah see that's the problem is is they admitted yeah they they did i mean it's good on them for admitting it i i appreciate that more but at the same time it's like if you knew these problems were going to be there you probably shouldn't have done that well and they refunded everyone's tickets to attend like because you had to buy a ticket to go but they mm -hmm. didn't refund anyone's like travel or anything like that to i get mean of there. course not yeah, and everyone's like, no, this was literally, like, one of the worst experiences that could have ever been, and you pitched it as, you know, a second Coachella, this big, beautiful event and all this stuff, and it was nothing like that. That's so unfortunate. You got dicked out. That's well, really bad. And here's the thing, is that Mr. McFarlane and Mr. Atkins, two of the people that were putting it together, had admitted, well, there are reports and paper trails of them reaching out to performers and celebrities in advance of the festival, warning them to not attend and, and admitting to these people and telling them that they are under equipped and that the festival will be potentially dangerous because they don't have the, the anything they need. They don't have the food. They don't have the power. They don't have the security. They don't have anything organized well enough. And it completely fell apart. And so they were telling people before it happened to not attend because it was going to be a shit show, and then still Lo and hold, behold, still hold the festival anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they've already got too much invested in it. I guess, but I you, mean, you notice, you notice they 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 gave back people's money to attend the show. Did they give back any of the money that they spent while at the show? No, exactly. They still made out. Yeah, <laughs> unless they have to pay a hundred million dollars. Sure. But, like, okay, so let me explain this to you. At music festivals, so many people are high on ecstasy and other things that they will sit there and buy a bottle of water for $5. Oh, yeah, I know. So you could probably make tons of bank on just concession concessions alone, especially since... All of those drugs dehydrate you, so you're constantly buying water anyway. Well, in this case, it was supposed to be catered as part of your ticket. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
So I don't I don't know. There's not enough details on it. Just a lot of very unhappy people that spend a lot of money. Yeah, I would be unhappy too. Two. Of course, a lot of those people have a lot of money, but that's an entirely different uh, entirely different thing. It's official. Humans are going to Mars. NASA has unveiled their plan. This is submitted by I correct other people to our technology. Yahoo! I hope you like shit potatoes. Why is my CPU crying? God damn and it. Shit corn on the cob. I, I need computer Shit upgrade. on the cob, if you will. So bad. My computer. We're gonna eat other things. My computer's crying. It'll be amazing. It, Nathan, make my computer cry less. Oh, I can only make things cry more. I can't make things cry less. I understand. My computer is just choking right now, and it's very saddening to me. Oh. Anyway, so uh, hopefully the live stream is still going okay, but my computer is choking, and I apologize for that. It looks fine for me. That's good. That's good because my CPU is crying. Anyway, so at, Trump issued a mandate for NASA to get people to Mars by 2033. Um, a one week later, NASA responded with a very detailed plan of how they are going to reach Mars. They're like, shit, we've been, we've been thinking about this for years. Well, and they got additional funding, though. Yeah. Now, it's only 0.5% of, of the nation's budget. Mm -hmm. It's how much NASA got compared to when we made it to the moon when they were getting 4%. Sure. So, I mean, the money that we have right, that, that they're funded with right now, if it's still along those same lines of percentage, will not pay for the full project. But basically, here's what they're going to do. There's five phases, starting with, five, with phase zero. Why? Don't know. Anyway, so phase zero, they're going to be conduct conducting tests at the International Space Station and developing partnerships with pri private space companies. Phase one is going to start in around 2018 and will go to 2025, and that's going to include the launch of testing six SLS rockets. Those rockets are going to be delivering components to a deep space gateway, which is a new space station that's going to be built near the moon to serve the astronauts that are en route to Mars. Um, okay, so it's like a middle point? Yep. Phase two will launch the deep space transport tube towards the lunar station in 2027 and in 2028 or 2029. Astronauts will have to live in the tube for more than 400 days. Oh, for a second, I thought you were going to say years. I was like, there's no fucking way. In 2030, Phase 3 will see the uh, the tube restocked with supplies, um, and then the Mars crew via SLS rockets, and Phase 4, of course, will be the trip itself in 2033. So... In 16 years on this plan, they should we theoretically we will be at Mars. That's cool. Now, I mean, SpaceX has already said, but SpaceX and Boeing have said that they hope to get there first with very uh, ambitious goals of getting there by 2022. I, that's what five years. I don't see that yeah, one happening, I, but I don't either. Like, the biggest issue they're having is not necessarily getting there, it's getting there alive. Because there is no, like, there is no easy way to come back. You can't do an emergency return. Once you have launched, you have to get there and then build up, rebuild to launch yourself back, is the current oh, plan. God. And so there, once you've sent yourself off, you can't, like, put on the brakes and go back home if something goes wrong. Nope, you're fucked. And it's going to take, like, they, they, it's, it, they need roughly over two years worth of food, worth of air, as well as, you know, other supplies. Mm -hmm. God damn. How, like, with the air and food, like, they can kind of go hand in hand if you have, like, a garden. But at the same time, it has to be a pretty big garden in fucking space. And, you, well, then you, know, you need, you know, two years worth of water. Yeah, well, on top of that, like, oh, I mean, you can kind of recycle your water in a way. Oh, and I'm sure they they will, but that's still that that's a lot of complicated shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about it, and like, I mean, yeah, it's all these problems are fairly not easy to 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 solve, but like, if you sat there and thought through it, you can engineer something pretty pretty decent. They are quite large. Either way, though, it does mean that we should be making it to Mars in our lifetimes. Maybe, Damn, maybe, finally. Maybe not you or me specifically, but it's... I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to be the, the, the intergalactic correspondent for the show. Uh, okay, sure, I'm down. 
Yeah, intergalactic, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. All right, that happened. One. Leaked document reveals Facebook. Fa fuck, shit, damn it. Wait, you have a button for that. I, not anymore. Oh, okay, never mind. Hold on. Take three? Sure. Three. Action. Leaked document reveals Facebook conducted research to target emotionally vulnerable and insecure youth. This is submitted by Lord Keck to our news. So, Facebook, you know, just because... Fucking what? Just because you have a million users, a billion users, doesn't mean you get to do whatever the fuck you want with them. No, that's fucked up. So, Facebook has come under fire over recently leaked documents from Australia that show that they were targeting vulnerable youths who, quote, need a confidence boost to facilitate predatory advertising practices. That's fucked up. So they're preying upon the people who who are having a tough spot. Yep, they're looking at people that are right around the age of fourteen and that feel all these are in quotes defeated, overwhelmed, stressed, anxious, nervous, stupid, silly, useless, or a failure. So every fourteen year old ever. Shit, at this point, it's like 14 to 35. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Um, such inter information was then gathered, and then they would use it to... They didn't sell it to advertisers, but they used it to promote to advertisers to who they could put their ads in front of. That just sounds like selling, but... With additional steps? Yeah, like, they're just like... It's, it's like what's up here. It's like, for a while there, pot shops couldn't sell you weed because the, the legislation hasn't hadn't been made yet so instead they would accept donations and then they would also give you free samples of weed sure so they're and selling just, you weed they're selling you weed they're just slapping specific words on it hey i i i believe they're probably fucking selling off this goddamn information to people and that's fucked up well, and I mean, Facebook makes a huge, like, it, it's money comes from advertising. It's like Google. It's money comes from advertising. And so, yeah, that's, I, I mean, now, the information uh, w w didn't have any personal information or anything in it. And it was, you know, uh, uh, anonymous and didn't, you know, and was vague, aggregated information. But fucking still. Yeah, it's that's not right. This is a, That is clearly a fucking... An invasion of privacy in a gross a gross way of just exploiting our youth who feel, you know, like our youth, really. Well, and the only thing that Facebook has said is that it will conduct an investigation into the matter and admitted that it was inappropriate to target young children in such a way. You're damn fucking right. At least make them at least 18. At least 18. You know, wait, and, wait until they're, you know, legally adults before you start trying to sell them shit. Mm-hmm. What kind of fourteen year old do you know who feels like shit Wait. has ass loads of money to sell to, to There it is. Spend. How many fourteen year olds do you know with money? Well, okay, so in some places, like if you go to like California and you go to, to the higher ends, the the Hamptons and everything, they probably have like three or four credit cards. But like fourteen year olds up here, unless you're coming from old money, like old spinard, or from Hilltop, you're not you don't have money. You don't have any money. Mm. Um hey, uh, this one. Uh oh. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Hey Nathan, what'd you care about in the last twenty-four, uh, seventy-two hours? Um, I finished a season of a TV show, and I thought it was pretty good, so I'm gonna plug that really quickly. What show is that? Um, all right. So it's it's gonna be kind of silly. It is an MTV show, and it's called The Shannara Chronicles. Oh, I've heard of it. It's it's a fantasy um, a fantasy story. It's it was based off of a book. Um, it's pretty interesting. I had a, I can draw parallels to a lot of different things like Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. It was brutal like Game of Thrones in some ways. There were people who you didn't expect dying just ended up you know dead you know. Um, but at the same time like it. it it was a little softer than Game of Thrones. Um, oh, yeah. There was less. There was less budget, but it was a. It was a good story. It was also on MTV and not HBO. Right. If it was on something else, it would have been better. Um, they had the the girl from Pan's Labyrinth in it, um, and she's much more grown up. And by 
God, is she much more grown up. Um, You're right there. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just giving myself the vapors. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It was, it was a good story. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see if there's a season two. Um, I would plug it. It's on. It's on um, uh, Netflix. Um, it was not a waste of my time, which I thought it was going to be initially. Um, but now that I've finished that, I'm going to go back into JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I've been watching Stardust Crusaders because that is season three. And uh, by God, do I want a body like a Joe Star? Man, you watch so much shit. Dude, I watch. I don't play video games during the week. Yeah, you don't play video games that much. Yeah, not not much anymore, unless they're like very party games or like I don't sit down and play like forty hours of an RPG anymore because like I used to enjoy that shit, but like nothing's really captivated my interest in a while. That's fair. Not that he needs the additional plug, but it's something that I'm excited about anyway. Um, if you do not, if, if <laughs> one of my uh, inspirations for everything that I've tried to do, such as the show here and I just stuff on YouTube in the, the past nine years and stuff has been a gentleman by the name of Philip DeFranco. If you uh, have, who's that? If you have not watched Philip DeFranco, um, I've never seen an episode of his great news show in my life. <laughs> um, he does a, a new show that is currently four days a week, same as ours, Monday through Thursday. Um, he, for the last four years, has been signed under um, a branch of Disney called Discovery Digital that owns a lot of new uh, YouTube channels. Um, Discovery Digital is also the ones that own SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd, as well as People Be Like and several others, and they recently horribly downsized. They were keeping the Philip DeFranco show, but the Philip DeFranco show decided that they were going to try to break off on their own. Um, Philip DeFranco put a lot of his own money and invested very heavily in himself and has purchased all of his rights back to his own properties. And, okay. is, and is going fully independent, and he's trying to launch his own news network. That's what's up. Yeah, I support that. It, it's a very ambitious thing, especially for one guy. All right, and you want to talk about uh, your little bit in one of his videos? Uh, no, no, I don't. Um, no? No, I, I, he, so I mean, this show is funded through Patreon. His entire news network is going to be funded through Patreon as well as some other things, obviously. Um, he launched the Patreon today. If you go to defrancoelite.com or patreon.com slash defranco, um, if you are interested, he is very good at staying very unbiased, presenting neutral ground and very accurate facts. They fact check everything they present because he is tired, very tired of fake news and misleading uh, mainstream news organizations and that's his goal is provide real accurate news without the biases of corporations which is why he is going independent and bought his rights back and things like that so that he didn't have to you know it's like well we don't want you talking about this if they yeah. are if they own you you have to listen if he gets big enough maybe he'll buy like us? He'll, he'll like hire no not buy us like hire journalists and that would be great well, and I believe he already intends to do that, and on some level. Shit, if he wants to buy us, feel free. You can buy me for like a dollar, dollar fifty. How about tree fifty? Oh god, you're like tripling my value. Well, I mean, gotta get you some somewhat of a good deal, right? I, you, you're too much. <laughs> I've lived in China for too long. So if you if you don't know who Philip DeFranco is, I strongly encourage you go check out what he does. It is it it is very inspirational and it is a good thing that the world currently lacks. I hope that this does very well for him. I also hope that the Wiki Tribune, the the Wikipedia fact checking news article thing does very well because so many of our news organizations are so heavily Shit. biased they are fake uh, news yeah they, they, and you're, you're that that's right as much of a joke as that is they are very heavily fake news and very biased towards their own le political leanings and it'll be nice to have more sources that are not affected by that because like as as, as hard as we try to be you and me are are, 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 are fairly left wing i don't know what you're talking about yeah you do so i'm not left whatsoever even if you don't want to support him i encourage you to go check it out it's good stuff, and I'm, he's going to do just fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to start throwing out crazy political words like proletariat and bourgeoisie. He, he launched the Patreon nine hours ago mm -hmm. and is currently sitting at 8,853 patrons. God damn. Yeah, the intro um, amount that 
it, like the recommended donation is five dollars. So if everyone donates the minimum amount, it's still over forty grand a month. Jeez. Yep. And yes, Kendall, I agree. He used to be a really big ass. Who, Philip DeFranco? Yeah. Yeah, it was about like four years ago. But I mean, it was he was really heavy into the clickbaity stuff and just trying to make money. And when you're mm -hmm. just trying to make money, you'll do a lot of things. Um, luckily, yeah, I mean, shit, I've done a lot of things for money that I'm not proud of. Yeah, luckily now, um, he doesn't have that that problem as much and is able to to go for it a little bit more. So I wish him luck. And if you would like to help him, uh, you know, go for it, then go for it. Yeah, definitely. Go help him out. Uh, if you want to help us out, which I mean, if if I, I, I I'm not going to uh, to to be coy about this if you have to choose between giving him money or giving me money i choose me his patreon is is doing fucking fine and it's existed for nine hours <laughs> if you want to help our us patreon's out, existed for years i don't think it's been years year decades uh patreon.com slash daily internet if you would like to help support us uh, I didn't, Andrew Walters wants to know how much you've done on camera for money. I'm not going to talk about that because they're probably on the internet. Mm, okay. Well, he's going to shave his face for money. Yeah, it's true. If they do it. And you know what? I've, I've decided if my face, my face gets shaved, I'll probably get a haircut too. What's up, man? That'll be crazy. You'll be a, a yeah. whole new man. I, I will. Everyone will see me and they'll be like, holy shit, you look like... Well, you look like you're 15. I'll be like, fuck you, I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if they don't hurry, they might. you might be 24 by that time. Oh, man. Finally, I'll be out of 23. I hate being 23. Nobody likes you when you're 23. You only say that because of the stupid Blink-182 song. It's not stupid. It's factual. It's pretty much gospel. It's stupid. How dare you? How dare you? No, how dare you? No. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so what the fuck are we talking about? Oh, yeah, it's time to go. Everybody, if you... I already told you how to support the show. If you wanted to help the show grow, then uh, share us on social media. Twitter at iReditCast, Instagram at iReditCast, or share us on Facebook. We would love you for that as well. Or give us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. That also helps us quite well. Past that, mm, Kevin McLeod does our music at Incompetech.com. You can leave us an email if you'd like to send that in to our inbox, which is feedback.irata at gmail.com, or call and leave us a voicemail at 508-738-2278. That's it, everybody. That is your 279th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Have a good day, everyone. Good. Goodbye. <laughs> oh.